I'm an athlete. I have an athlete's mind, an athlete's hand, and athlete's foot. Which really sucks. Because it's itchy. Everybody, this is Praxis, and yes, this video is about athlete's foot. There's a lot of question marks around athlete's foot. For one, it's something that doesn't just apply to athletes. It can be on parts of your body that aren't just your foot. People say it's caused by ringworm, but it's not a worm at all. It's caused by funguses. A lot of question marks about it. I've had it a number of times in my life. I'm the kind of person where in the summertime, I'm always walking around barefoot, and people will see me doing that nonstop throughout the summer. And oftentimes I've been told, oh man, if I did that, you know, my feet would be all dry and cracked. Not mine. My feet are constantly exuding moisture, which is great in the summer because I can go barefoot all the time. But in the wintertime, when I take those feet and I put them into socks and then inside of dark boots, and they're moist, it's, like an, it's an ideal environment for getting athlete's foot. I've gotten it a couple times in my life, and I've always used the creams to try to get rid of it. There's uh, like Lotrimin is one of the creams you can use, there's all, all different kinds of them. But there are a lot of downsides with using, using the creams. One, you gotta pay for them. Two, you can't use them until you have the athlete's foot. It's not the kind of thing where you're just gonna be putting that cream on your feet all the time to prevent it from happening in the first place. And on top of that, uh, from a prepper's perspective, they're not the kind of thing that you can stockpile like in your pantry or something like that, so you always have it like you know the shit hits the fan and you get athlete's foot and you have the like the cure ready to go because they have a definite shelf life and they have to be kept at a very uh, particular temperature range so it just it does not um, lend itself to like the whole like you know I'm gonna stock a bunch of it so I got it in the future if I ever need it so I was looking for an alternate way of handling athlete's foot and I came up with what is just why doesn't everyone do this? It is the best way of addressing athlete's foot, in my opinion. And it is uh, derived from my experiences in the past. Uh, oftentimes in the wintertime, I would like take a vacation down to the, uh, the Caribbean or something. And if I was dealing with athlete's foot leading up to that trip, once I got down to the Caribbean, I'm walking through the sand, you have the sun on your toes, you have the, you know, the salt water and everything, and the sand's kind of grinding away at your feet. Any athlete's foot that I, I had would always go away at that time. So what I thought is, well, why don't I try, try to simulate those circumstances, but you know, without having to get on a jet plane and, and do all that. And it works. Uh, right here, what I have next to me is a plastic tub. And in the bottom, I've got some sand. This is just sand that I got at the hardware store. You can get river sand or whatever. But when I made this thing, it was in the dead of winter and I was not gonna have any access to river sand. So this is just some stuff i had had kicking around. It was in a little sandbox I made for river that again, like I said, I got at the hardware store. Um, put a bunch of sand in here, just some regular, iodized sea salt. I guess it doesn't have to have iodine in it, but you know, there's iodine in the ocean anyway. Um, I put some of that in and put some warm water and oh, it's just wonderful. I'll, I'll put this underneath uh, where I work at my you know, computer doing practice videos. Uh, and like in the evening, I'll just fill it up with like maybe a gallon, gallon and a half of water, put some salt in there, a ratio of about one third of a cup per gallon. You can do more than that, but I wouldn't want to do less than it because you're trying to, you know, shock those those funguses uh, and uh, warm up the water. You can either do it over the stove or I got some water going back here in the, the parabolic solar cooker. You can do it any way that you like, but you get nice, warm, salty water, get your feet into the sand, rub them around in there. It's, it's just wonderful. It's absolutely wonderful and it totally works. Uh, it is something you can do on a nonstop basis. So you can just prevent yourself from getting it uh, athlete's feet, uh, foot in the first place. It, I just, I can't go on enough about it. It's just like the, the qualitative experience, uh, experiential difference between putting your feet into some nice, warm, salty water with sand versus smearing creams on them. There you go. <laughs> so if you are someone that has issues with athlete's foot, uh, I would highly recommend doing this as something both to cure it and just as an ongoing thing. If you know that you're prone to it, just kind of do this whenever you have a chance, you're watching a movie, put your, your feet in front of it uh, and, and kind of scrub them around. You'll want to change the water now and then because you're going to be putting dead skin cells in there. Um, you know, so you want to dump it out. I, I, I'll use it for like maybe a week or so uh, and I'll kind of filter it a little bit as I go, like, you know, pour off like just the water and then like kind of swish out the, the dead skin stuff. 
and then throw it out. Uh, you know, try to get the sand clean again. But it works super, super well. Is it going to work on uh, similar sorts of things like jock itch, which is really kind of from the same thing? I don't know. Can, could you get your crotch in there somehow? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's really ideal for athlete's foot just because you can stick your feet in. But, you know, I, I don't know. If you could somehow maneuver any part of your body into it, I would presume that it would uh, be very effective. But certainly, it works on feet, and it's, it's such a treat. It's such a treat in the middle of the winter. That's it. Give it a try if you think that it might help you, and thanks for watching. This episode has been brought to you in part by Prescott Caliber Club and Jeske Defense Strategies. Prescott Caliber Club is a federally licensed firearm manufacturer and retail store specializing in firearms, survival gear, and producing great online content. If you want to thank them for supporting this channel, go check them out at prescottcalclub.com. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.